Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll. Welcome to another episode of In The Mix. Today we're going to talk about microphone preamplifiers. The world don't need another love song And I don't need another lie from you Okay guys, today I want to talk about microphone preamplifiers and why I choose which one I use for various sources. I get a lot of questions about this subject. You know, sometimes I don't think it's as obvious as a microphone, you know, whereas uh, WA-47, WA-87, 251, all these microphones, you know, it's more common uh, knowledge and easier to access, especially with, you know, even untrained ears can hear more high frequency content, right? We can hear more low frequency content all that kind of stuff. When it comes to preamplifiers, it seems like there's a lot more, you know, uh, mysterious, um, you know, voodoo involved as, as far as why an, a specific engineer uses any, you know, particular preamplifier on a certain um, uh, instrument. So I want to kind of give, um, you know, a rundown of why I choose which, you know, warm audio circuit I choose on which sources and why, all right? Let's start with the WA-73. You know, it's based on a classic console, classic circuit, you know, out of the UK, it's transformer based. Um, this circuit is known for being very large. Anything that passes through it is going to get bigger than light. It's, it takes up a lot of space, so you want to use that to your advantage. Stuff that you want to sound big in a mix. You know, let's say a kick drum, a snare drum, a bass guitar, a lead vocal. You know, these are very important, critical parts of our mix which are, are going to be loud, you know, we're, we're going to have that fader up there, right? So by nature, regardless of where we have the fader, th things are getting big and impressive and important sounding through this circuit, okay? Next, let me point out the WA-412 right here. This is also based on a classic console uh, that's transformer based, uh, uh, an American made console. It, but that's where the, you know, the similarities stop. It's a different, it's a different animal than this guy. What this, what this guy's known for is its sound, instead of sounding big and taking up a lot of space, it's very punchy, it's very streamlined, it's very focused. So everything, it's still transformer based, so everything sounds, you know, um, big and, and grand and glorious and all that good stuff, but you can add up high numbers of track count on this guy and they hold hands well because of that focus that I was talking about. So we're talking about things like piano, uh, you know, extra synthesizer, keyboard passes, you know, whirly, B3, uh, acoustic guitars, mandolins, banjos, electric guitars, you know, a lot of track count, you know, sometimes in a lot of our productions. So I use that to my advantage, passing those things through, um, you know, a, a circuit like this allows me to get a lot of those on tape and, and I fight less, you know, when it comes to the mix with EQ choices and volume and panning because by nature they're holding hands and playing nice together, accumulating well, okay? Now let's talk about the Tone Beast up here. This guy, and this will also include the WA-12, uh, it's also a, a, a circuit that's very similar to this by nature, also based on an old, you know, a, a classic American console design, but it's, it's, it's not as clean as this. This guy um, it, it develops, you know, um, the transformer color, the very audible transformer color and harmonic distortion characteristics, um, you know, come, come out quicker on this guy than they do on this guy. So what I'm going to do with him, I'm going to use him on places like, you know, uh, drum ambience, room mics. Um, um, sometimes I will use that on background vocals. Maybe I've recorded the lead vocal through here. I want the background vocals to sound big and impressive, but not quite as big, not take up quite as much room as the lead vocal. So I'll record them through here, and by nature, that the, the lead vocal that I cut through the 73 is gonna push, push itself up front of this guy. The, these background vocals are still gonna sound impressive and important and all that stuff, but they're, 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 they're just gonna naturally find their way into the mix where I want them to. So. Everything that I record, I'm thinking at the end of the day, when I bring up my faders to start a mix, before I ever touch an EQ knob, before I ever put any reverb or delay, any compression, anything like that, all I do is bring up my faders and just by nature of which circuit I chose, the mix already starts to take shape. These guys, our bass guitar, our kick drum, our lead vocal are finding their way to the front and taking up the room that they're meant to take up. 
All these tracks that recorded through the 412 are holding hands and accumulating really nicely in the bottom. And then all that stuff, you know, in the middle that I've recorded through the Tone Beast is setting right where it needs to be. So that's why I do what I need to do. With these three products here, I can create, you know, about any sound, you know, soundscape, you know, in the mix that I'm trying to create. All right, guys, I hope that helps. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. If you would, remember, follow Warm Audio on all their social media pages, as well as if you would, follow me at In The Mix With Joe Carroll on my own Instagram and Facebook for extra behind the scenes content. Now for James Dupre singing another love song. Highway but signs and lines And too much time to think of you I keep changing stations every half a mile But I still don't hear the truth From my point of view The world don't need another love song Too many love songs don't come true Too many love songs don't come true